Bioweapon is a very modern sounding word. It's cool, it's scientific, it's sometimes called biological agent, which sounds like the most badass job title ever. And while it sounds like the kind of thing that came about during one of the world wars, the term bioweapon actually describes any use of any pathogen or toxin as a means of warfare. So throwing rotting cows into someone's castle to spread disease, that's this bloke using a bioweapon. One disease that was often used in pre-18th century biowarfare was the plague, a disease caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. Plague is, perhaps understandably, mostly known for the epidemic that killed at least a third of the European population from 1347 to 1353, the Black Death. The earliest claim of the use of bioweapon that I can find is Bronze Age texts describing diseased people being pushed into enemy lands in an attempt to cause an epidemic. Another ancient example that I've seen a lot of is King Assurbanipal putting a fungus called ergot into the wells of the cities that the Assyrians were sieging. But on doing further research, which so many articles I've seen clearly haven't, it became clear that this seems to be just a hyped up assumption that somebody's made, as while there is evidence that the Assyrians knew about ergot, it seems there is no evidence for them using it in warfare. But then again, I'm not sifting through hours of research to find out for sure whether or not there's any evidence for the Assyrians poisoning wells with ergot, so bear that in mind. Another interesting example of the scope of the term biological weapon is the use of poisoned projectiles like arrows in Homer's Iliad. Anyway, back to the plague. The earliest example I could find of the plague being used as a bioweapon were the sources mentioning how it was used in ancient China, but I couldn't find anything particularly detailed. Plague is endemic in rodents in Eastern Asia, so was likely used in the relatively common practice of infecting enemy water supplies as a part of warfare in this area. In fact, legendary Chinese general Hyo Chu Bing apparently died from such a disease, possibly plague, but the only source I could find for this was Wikipedia and a website that just copied and pasted the Wikipedia article. It was during the medieval era where the plague started to become a little more famous, which would lead to its increased use in biological warfare as the world jarringly understood how dangerous this disease could be. For some context, let's quickly go over the Black Death. As I mentioned earlier, the plague was already very present in parts of rural Asia. Europe was a perfect place for a devastating pandemic. Doctors were in no real position to fight against such a thing, cities were crowded and dirty, trade was lucrative, making travelling across countries and borders not uncommon, and war dominated much of mainland Europe. It was certainly not an ideal time for a really bad harvest. And that's just what happened. Well, surely it couldn't get any worse, right? Well, I feel like I've already spoiled the ending to this cliffhanger by already saying what this is about. Anyway, the Black Plague may have been caused by use of biological weapon as during the Siege of Kaffa in 1347, the Mongol army catapulted corpses infected with the plague into the city, so merchant ships fleeing the city carried the plague with them, taking it to Constantinople in modern-day Turkey, where it tore its way through the city. Eventually, a fleet of merchant ships arrived in Messina, Sicily. A terrifying scene awaited those who met the ships at the docks, as most of the crew were dead, and those still alive were diseased and dying. As soon as the local government caught wind of this, they tried to dispel the ships from the harbour where they could cause no more harm, but it was too late. It seems like such a small event to have caused such widespread catastrophe, which is why it's such a controversial theory. It's even controversial that the plague entered Kaffa on the infected corpses, with many believing that it could have just taken hold in the city on its own. As for its entry point in Europe, it's likely that there were several. The plague hit Europe in 1347 and showed no signs of slowing down until 1351. The estimated deaths vary massively, from 75 to 200 million, although it's generally agreed that at least a third of the European population died, with some estimates going as far as 60%. The population of many major cities, like Paris and London, saw a drop of more than half during the plague, and tens of thousands of villages, towns and hamlets were left abandoned or just empty as all the inhabitants died. It must have been an absolutely terrifying time to be alive. Europe had been in no position to deal with such a crisis and it showed. But it was the whole of Eurasia that suffered, with China and the Middle East also being particularly affected. So yeah, that's one particularly impactful use of biological warfare, if that guy catapulting dead bodies into Kaffa really was responsible. Not that I'm suggesting it was just one guy doing it all by himself with no orders, that'd be ridiculous. One link between the plague and warfare was the attempts of the Kingdom of Scotland to take advantage of a devastated England by invading. Henry Knighton, a medieval chronicler, recorded the attempt. The Scottish army marched south, hoping to easily defeat any weakened English resistance. 
the fear of Scottish invasion had been high. So high, in fact, that there had been rioting due to unrest caused by the fear and, you know, the plague. While encamped in the forest of Selkirk, however, the Scottish army was hit by the Black Death, which, according to Knighton, killed 5,000 of their men, forcing them to return home. This was in the autumn of 1349, and in 1350, the plague properly hit Scotland. So that was less of a biological weapon and more of just a biological cock-up. For a few hundred years after that, there were no real developments in the use of the plague in warfare, although flinging corpses into cities did continue. For example, during the Siege of Raval in 1710, Russian forces threw bodies of those who had died from the plague into the city to try and infect enemy forces. Fast forward to World War II, and Japan has a terrifying secret research unit, focused on chemical and biological weapons. Unit 731 is responsible for some of the worst atrocities committed during the war, and that probably deserves a video in itself. One of Unit 731's little projects was efficiently weaponizing the plague by mass breeding fleas to carry the disease. Unit 731 tested their new weapon on civilians and prisoners of war, often studying and dissecting the corpses, and sometimes performing vivisections on conscious subjects. Some of the ideas that Unit 731 had come up with included bombs filled with fleas and mice, which would be dropped on enemy civilian populations to start an epidemic, although it's not believed any of these were actually dropped. After the end of the Second World War came the Cold War, and nuclear weapons weren't the only type of WMD that both sides were rushing to get the upper hand in. Both the USSR and the USA looked to and succeeded in weaponizing the plague, with the USA using scientists pardoned of their war crimes from Germany and Japan, including the commander of Unit 731, Shiro Ishii. The information that Ishii gave was branded absolutely invaluable to the US, because the methods he had used to acquire them would have never have been used by US research teams. Eventually though, biological weapons were banned by the UN, and the nations of the world never made a bioweapon ever again. Of course they did. In fact, the Soviet Union never stopped. Well, it was proven that the Soviet Union never stopped. I can't speak for all nations on that one. So what about now? Any countries rumoured to be stockpiling up on plague supplies? Not as far as I'm aware, but some countries like the US do have large stocks of antibiotics in case of an attack. Well, that's it from me this week. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a safe week.